This is Dr. Dana Brackney, and I'm an associate professor in the Department of Nursing at Appalachian State University. The objectives of this presentation is that a student will practice using the first of the four motivational interviewing core skills, open-ended questioning. There are four motivational interviewing skills, and these four skills can be remembered with the mnemonic ORs. The first of these is open-ended questions. The second is affirmations. The third is reflections. And finally, the fourth are summaries. Open-ended questions allow you to obtain more information more quickly and determine what is on the person's mind. Have you ever played 20 questions? In this game, you must ask only yes and no questions to determine what a person is thinking. It's actually quite difficult. Imagine how quickly this game would go if you ask the open-ended question, um, what are you thinking of? So although people give longer answers to open-ended questions, you obtain more information and it is more conversational in tone than not using open-ended questions. Continuing with our 20 question example, the person playing this game might say they're thinking of a waterfall. Uh, tell me about why you're thinking of a waterfall, you may ask. The person responds, I went hiking this weekend and saw a beautiful waterfall along the Blue Ridge Parkway. This could lead to more specific questions that might be close ended, but take you to the topic that is of interest to your client. These questions often start with how, what, tell me about, and go from general to specific following the client's lead. The purpose of open-ended questions is that it places the patient in the lead. As they're answering, they may say, quote, I don't know why I was thinking of waterfalls. I, I guess it's because I went on a hike recently, but it's the trees I really enjoy seeing. The expression of ambivalence enables the interview to evoke change talk. When people answer open-ended questions, they often have not come to conclusions, so you are able to see their thinking process while they answer your question. Close-ended questions, on, on the other hand, are effective in emergent situations um, or for specific data such as, do you have allergies? But they're not usually very patient-focused. They are often procedural. Here are three close-ended questions. Take out your paper again and write down three open-ended questions from these to achieve our objective of learning to use open-ended questions. The first closed question, the first closed-ended question is, do you feel depressed or anxious? The second is, do you use drugs or alcohol? And the third is, do you binge drink? So take some, some time to write down your answers to these questions. Thank you.